Hi guys, welcome to Multiverse. I uh, know you didn't go to the wrong channel. Uh, today we're going to do a, something a little different than what we usually do. We're going to talk about the, the TV series Stranger Things 2. Uh, basically, I just finished watching the second season of Stranger Things. Uh, I didn't quite binge watch it, but I watched it uh, as quickly as I could. Not because I had to, because I wanted to. Basically, as soon as you, as I saw one episode, I had to see the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And sadly, as it happens in life, I had to stop watching at some point to do various things. But as soon as I could, I would go back and watch the next episode. Before I get started, uh, just a fair warning, I will, there will be plenty of spoilers. So if you don't want to, don't want to get anything spoiled, I will do a quick review right now. Uh, basically, if you liked the first season, it, the second season is as good as the first season. Uh, it has a lot of things from the first season so that you, it, it is a continuation of the first season. But it is different enough that it's not just a repeat of the first season. So if you, if you liked or loved the first season, you're going to like and love the second season. If somehow, for some reason, you didn't like the first season, I don't think you're going to like the second season even more anymore. It's pretty much a direct continuation of the first season, but there is a time gap uh, between the two seasons, obviously, that gets explored uh, through a few episodes and through a few flashbacks. But before I get started on season two, uh, let's go through what happened in season one and what I thought also of season one. Uh, basically, Stranger Things was quite literally an awesome surprise. I had no idea the series was coming up. I literally learned about the series the very day it dropped on Netflix. Uh, basically, I saw there's this YouTuber I follow uh, pretty much daily uh, called uh, Grace Randolph. And basically, she mentioned that, that series coming up. Uh, and I, I decided to watch one episode. I naively thought, okay, I'll watch one episode and uh, just to see how it is. And... Uh, I pretty much went through the whole series uh, almost in one sitting, about in one sitting and a half. Basically, I watched it as much as I could, fell asleep a bit. Then as soon as I walk, woke up, watched the rest of the series. So that should tell you how good I thought the series was. Uh, I'm an old man, and I pretty much lived through the, the time period that we see in the, the film. Um, basically, I was uh, 13 uh, during the time of the, the first season. And uh, during the time of the second season, which is about a year later, I was obviously 14. If you're one of our younger viewers who never were old enough to experience the 80s for yourself, this is a great representation of what the 80s was. It's a great representation of, of how it felt, how it looked. Um, I'm sure if we, if we were to come through, through episodes, we would probably see a few nitpicks of things that weren't quite accurate to that time but overall with it just uh, one viewing it, it's uh, the word i'm looking for is authentic it it feels like the 80s it smells like the 80s it, it looks like the 80s so if you if you weren't alive during the 80s this show will show you exactly how it was and also it is almost made like a, a series straight out from the 80s or actually more a movie straight out of the 80s the production value uh, the sound the music uh, even the way it is filmed and the way they're telling the story is something straight out of how films were made in the 80s. Like, it's as if they went and got Steven Spielberg to to shoot the, the, the film because it's basically a 10-hour film or a 9-hour film. It's not, it's not really, uh, it doesn't really feel like a TV show as much as a film. But it's as if they had gone and got uh, Steven Spielberg, but not just... Steven Spielberg, but Steven Spielberg from the 80s, the way Steven Spielberg was making films in the 80s. Uh, we'll see a lot of YouTubers who will complain about uh, Michael Bay or about Zack Snyder, about the way that they, they have shaky cam uh, everywhere for no good reason, or how the action is hard to follow because they're, they're cropped in way too close. This is pretty much the complete opposite to that. So if you're one of those people who actually uh, are a bit tired of the way modern films are not really doing a good job well this is for you this is the series for you this is something you have to watch because it is a, the completely opposite of a lot of the trends that we have right now in films and in uh, tv shows so if you're a little tired of those uh, those trends and those uh, some of those overused uh, technique this series will will be uh, will be for you 
I was a bit worried uh, when I started watching the, the first season because uh, basically it, it features a bunch of kids and the kids are notoriously not very good actors, not their fault, they're, they're kids. But sadly, whenever a grown-up decides to take kids and put them in a film, even if the kid has no talent, uh, sadly it ends up with something not unlike, like, uh, let's say, The Phantom Menace. Uh, you guys know what I mean. But here the kids, every single, every, every single actor in this film is very good. Even the kids. And especially some of the kids. Uh, the, the, obviously the kid that pretty much stands out is the, the little girl who plays uh, Eleven. She did a fantastic job with that role. Uh, last time I was this impressed with a uh, young kid. I think it was, uh, it was when I saw Hit Girl, uh, played by Chloe Grace Moritz. So in Stranger Things 1, basically uh, the, the kid of uh, Winona Ryder's character disappears. She doesn't know where he is. Uh, she asks the sheriff, which is played by David Harbour, to, to look for him. Obviously, at first he thinks she's exaggerating or crazy, or he just uh, he's just in the woods or something, and uh, they're going to find him soon. But obviously, the mystery is much deeper than that, and and he's actually quite a good detective. Uh, for once, we saw a police officer who actually was doing his job, and he actually could do a pretty good job, which was uh, which was refreshing. Too often, we'll see uh, uh, officers of the laws who are complete. Nickum poops, but here we had uh, David Arbor play a pretty competent sheriff. Like I wish uh, Batman in the, uh, the Christopher Nolan trilogy was half as good a detective as uh, the sheriff was in Stranger Things. And of course, the whole mystery leads to a, a little girl called uh, Eleven, which they start calling L uh, later on. And also we have, we follow this group of kids who basically they their Will's friend uh, Will disappeared and those kids are wondering what happened to their friends and they're trying to look into it as well. Uh, and we saw uh, as we as we spend a lot of time with the kids we see them uh, do what kids do. Uh, we see them play games like uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we see them being a little silly. We basically see them being being kids. So they're they're they're. They're not too smart for kids, but they didn't make them too dumb for kids either. They just made them people, that, regular people that just happen to be kids. Uh, they made them normal kids, which which was uh, quite refreshing. And there's a lot of cliche also that they tried to use, and then they tried to reverse those cliche. Uh, basically, we have like the, the teenage girl who has this this boyfriend who's a jerk, and he's being a jerk to the the brother of Will. The, Will is the kid who disappeared. So the, 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 the jock is pretty much a jerk to the brother. And, and we think that it's going to be the whole, uh, uh, she, she's going to go for the brother and then the, the, the jock wants to get revenge on the brother or something like that. And they almost go in that direction. But then uh, they, they finally do a turnaround where it turns out that the jerk or the jock wasn't that much of a jerk. He, he, yeah, he was a bit of a jerk sometimes, but he was. That, that's the whole thing is that they have fleshed out characters. They have characters that sometimes can be jerk, but being a jerk is not their one attribute. They actually have multiple facets to themselves. They have, have actually multiple have multiple facets to their personalities. So yeah, the guy can be a bit of a jerk, but he can also be a good guy when when it, it's called for. So they, they sometimes they'll they'll try to use certain uh, cliches, certain uh, trends that are a bit overused, as I mentioned, and then they'll twist them around and and go into a fresh new direction with those, which was much appreciated sometimes. So again, basically, there's a whole a whole bunch of intrigue in that that first season. Uh, there's the whole mystery about Will who disappeared, and there's also the whole mystery around L. Uh, there's this little girl who shows up. Uh, doesn't know anyone, doesn't know anything. She's, uh, she, I guess she's basically one of those uh, fish out of water story. And uh, and somehow she also has these amazing uh, powers that she uses to help her friends. And uh, ultimately she ends up being uh, the key they need to be able to save their friend's will. From this place they call the Down Under. Uh, basically some sort of uh, alternate mirror reality or something. So they manage to, to save Will. And, but sadly, they think that uh, L is gone. But the sheriff kind of knows that L is in uh, quite gone. And uh, we also have Will, who it turns out that he was saved, but it, there is still something sadly uh, fishy going on uh, about uh, our poor friend Will. And basically, that's pretty much how the, the season ends. Uh, it, it ends with uh, a bit of mystery still to tease what will come into the, the second season. I tried to stay a bit vague in case some of you haven't seen uh, the first season just yet. 
uh, if you haven't i'd strongly suggest go see it so now we're going to go into season two and again there will be spoilers so if you don't want to have season two spoiled for you go watch it right now and come back here once you're done so season two starts roughly about a year after season one we see that the kids went back to pretty much leading uh, their normal lives uh, we see the sheriff went back to being the sheriff and one of our writer's character now has a new boyfriend with Bob, uh, played by Sean Astin, aka Samwise Gamgee from The Lord of the Rings. And of course, he's playing the dorky uh, stepdad, which is trying to fit in with, uh, with this, his new family, quote-unquote. We will see the kids uh, prepare themselves to uh, celebrate uh, Halloween. Uh, basically, they all made themselves uh, Ghostbusters costumes, something we see uh, quite a bit in the, in the various trailers. But then, of course, something is not quite right. Uh, we have our friend Will realize that there is still something wrong. He, somehow he doesn't really talk much about it. He doesn't seem to want to be able to... He doesn't seem to want to talk about it with his friends, or even less with his mom. Uh, with his mom, it's understandable. Basically, as soon as... Uh, she's really, really worried because of what happened in season one. And as soon as he mentions that uh, something's wrong... Uh, she br brings him to some doctor and they start uh, prodding him uh, to do some sort of test. So you can sort of understand why the character doesn't really want to talk to his mother. But at some point he has no choice but talk to uh, his friend Mike. And uh, he has to mention that he sees this sort of shadow monster. So Mike is the, pretty much the only one who knows about that. Although uh, his mother at some point did see some, uh, some sort of drawings that he did. Because he makes a whole bunch of drawings about whatever he sees. Uh, which uh, at first they, they seem to think that it's some sort of, of dream uh, caused by some sort of post-traumatic stress. But obviously it is not some sort of dream. Uh, it is our friend Will who has some sort of visions from the Down Under place. This sort of uh, mirror universe, uh, alternate reality sort of. And you can see this sort of uh, shadow creature that later on they will uh, label uh, a mind flayer. Uh, which is not really... Uh, accurate and but it's within their understanding it's the closest they can come to describe uh, the creature and it gives them the opportunity to keep on keep on using uh, Dungeons and Dragons as, as some sort of references to what is happening uh, like in the previous season they had the Demogorgon they're still referred to the Demogorgon uh, in, in this uh, season although they also mentioned uh, there's some Demo dogs which basically they they have these dog-like creature that they call the Demogorgons and uh, they, at some point, they decide to sort of merge the two words together with uh, demo gargons, dogs, and it becomes demo dogs. Although only really um, Dustin calls them uh, demo dogs. Uh, pretty much everyone else just calls them dogs. And by the end of the first episode, we see what happened uh, to Eleven. Uh, basically, she went to live uh, with the sheriff. Uh, we see in a later flashback that the, the sheriff, uh, we saw at the end of the first season, the sheriff was leaving her some uh, egos. And uh, we see in a flashback in this season how him leaving her some egos pretty much got her to trust him and, and go with him. And uh, somehow he, she ended up uh, living with him. Uh, we know that the sheriff uh, lost a, a daughter. So basically he's using uh, L as um, some sort of a replacement daughter for, for the daughter that he, that he lost. Which also explains why sometimes he's almost irrational in his fear of her being uh, being in danger or her being discovered. So he, he goes a little too far in the sense that he, he tries to over to protect her a little too much, but he ends up isolating her a little too much. Which leads to some conflict between him and her sometimes. And also it leads to her at some point leaving to try to find her, her actual mother. And the scenes between uh, Eleven and the sheriff are are very sometimes they're very sweet especially early on at some point he tries to cheer her up and he actually does uh, even though he's isolating her he's trying to compensate uh, in ways that he can like at some point he tries to promise to her that the, they'll watch a, he'll come in home early they'll watch a film together and eat some candies and it, it cheers her up a bit but of course he ends up uh, breaking his promise and uh, by breaking his promise it makes her angry and the the the, the dynamic between them uh, 
as much as when they're happy, they're, there's, it's, it's very sweet to see them. Uh, as much when they get angry at each other, it's almost uh, scary. You wonder what he's going to do to her, but you also wonder what she's going to do to him because she could literally uh, just snap him in two with her powers. So it's a, it's a, uh, the, the contrast between the two was, is very sweet and very scary sometimes. And and the two actors did a wonderful job. Uh, selling that that relationship, selling how much he cares about her, but how much he's terrified that something could happen to her, but and which makes him go uh, almost as crazy as uh, Winona Ryder. As much as Winona Ryder is uh, is worried about her son uh, all the time, he's very worried for for L too, and his way to to show that he, he's scared is is by him getting angry and and sometimes lashing out he doesn't he doesn't hit her or stuff like that but he he gets really angry at her sometimes or or not so much at her but at 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 what he fears could happen to her if somebody would find out that she she's living with him so again overall the actors did a wonderful job as much as the kids together did a great job and this time the mystery is not uh, not the mystery about what happened to will but what is what are those visions that Will is seeing, and uh, what is that shadow creature that that Will uh, seems seems to be uh, to be seeing? And there's all all there's a few other threads also. Like in the first season, there's this character called Barb who disappears, and then you have her friend Nancy who who goes to see her parents to to have supper with them. And you can tell it's probably something they do once in a while to try to so that they don't feel as lonely because they, they pretty much lost uh, their daughter but they don't they don't know she's dead all they know is that she's missing and they they're still hoping against hope that she, that she will come back home and they even hired this uh, i guess this fraud almost fraud type of guy to try to find her which will make uh, Nancy feel guilty because she knows that uh, Barbara is dead but she she cannot tell the parents but it will become part of the intrigue in the sense that uh, then she will decide to to take down the the people who she feels are responsible for Barbara disappearing. Uh, Steve will not quite agree with that, which will be the tension basically between her and Steve. And it's pretty much what will end up uh, breaking them apart. Although not so much that as the realization that she, she will pretty much come to realize that she, she doesn't really love Steve. And the way they handled the breakup between Steve and, and Nancy was awesome. It pretty much went against against type. Like normally, the boyfriend would be angry, and it would be angry at the the new boyfriend, which ends up being uh, Will's brother. And uh, but no, they 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 Steve realizes that well, Nancy wasn't the one for him, and and that's it. And that that was very refreshing. Already in the first season. Uh, Steve was really refreshing in terms of character. Y yes, he is playing the the, the jock, uh, the school jock, but he, he, again, as I mentioned earlier, he is a fleshed out character. He's a three dimensional human being who isn't just uh, just the jock. He's a jock, yes, but he, he's also a guy who can who can be a good guy when 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 uh, when he has to, and who can realize that him and Nancy maybe are not a good match. And then later on, when Dustin is looking for, for someone to help him, and he, he realizes that no one else uh, is there around, Steve is the one who actually el ends up uh, helping Dustin, and he even uh, goes further than that, he even uh, gives him tips about girls and, and all that good stuff. And there's this awesome scene where basically uh, Dustin mentioned his great hair and how he, that's why he doesn't have to worry about girls because of, of the great hair he has. And then uh, Steve reveals his secret to Dustin, and, uh, and even at the end of the, the, the series, or I'm almost tempted to say at the end of the film, uh, Dustin uses those very same tricks to pretty much uh, make him, give himself a makeover and change his, uh, his hairstyle to uh, kind of match a little bit uh, with, uh, with Steve. A little bit. But so uh, the whole mystery this, uh, this season pretty much turns around the shadow monster that, uh, that Will can actually see. And even worse, at some point, the shadow monster does take possession of poor Will. And uh, at some point, they have, they have to figure out how they can get the shadow monster out of Will. But also, they have to figure out how to get rid of all the, the, the Demogorgon dogs or the Demo dogs. And they also have to figure out how to close the portal through which all those creatures are coming in. 
and there's also the whole uh, the whole subplot of uh, of Eleven who wants to find her mother, and she ends up finding her mother, and through through finding her mother, she ends up also being able to find uh, uh, what she calls her sister. Not really her sister because I don't think they come from the same mother, but technically they were part of the same experiments because they both had powers. Uh, Eleven has has pretty much telekinetic powers. And her sister, which is branded with the number 8, uh, seems to have uh, illusion powers. She can pretty much create any images she wants, or uh, create lack of images. Like at some point, they're about to be discovered by some evil soldiers, and uh, so she's able to make them uh, invisible. She ma she's able to make it so that the, the evil soldiers just cannot see them. But of course, after finding her quote-unquote sister, uh, Eleven has to go back because she, she has to go back and help her friends. And basically, at some point, Will gets uh, taken over by the, the shadow creature, and they have to find a way to get the shadow creature out of Will. Otherwise, uh, they're about to close the portal, and uh, closing the portal should kill all the, uh, the, the, the Demogorgon god, do dogs, and it should also kill the, the shadow creature. But seeing how the shadow creature is now inside of Will, they're worried that the shadow creature might kill Will. So they have to find a way to get it out. And it turns out that they, uh, they uh, Will had mentioned at some point that the creature didn't like the, the heat, that it wanted the cold. So they figure that uh, if they heat up Will as much as they can, odds are the creature will, go, will come out, and then they'll be able to close the portal, and uh, everything will be, will be fine. Which is pretty much what, what the ends up happening. So you have pretty much all those various subplots uh, through, through the series, which pretty much end, uh, ends up uh, all converging together at one point, and then it leads to, to the conclusion of the, of the series. Obviously, there's, they're probably planning to make uh, Stranger Things uh, 3 already. The way the series ends, uh, it ends on some sort of cliffhanger, not unlike what we had at the end of Season 1. I guess the series could end here. Uh, the, way, the way they end it, they do suggest that it could continue in a, in a future series. But if, if this was somehow the last uh, series of Stranger Things for whatever reason, um, we, ha we do have some sort of, uh, of conclusion uh, at the end of this season. But it does leave the door open to, to future seasons. It's not as much sequel begging as uh, some other series uh, can do sometimes. But uh, you, you can tell that they, they probably have plans for a third season already. Uh, my guess is either they're already working a, on a third season, because from what I understand, the first season of uh, Stranger Things was really successful. So I would strongly so you think that their odds are they're already working on season three. But then again, uh, producers being producers, it's not impossible that maybe they're waiting to see how well Stranger Things 2 does before greenlighting uh, Stranger Things 3. I guess we're going to have to wait and see for that. So again, if you haven't watched uh, this series just yet, I would strongly suggest you go and go watch season 1 first and then watch uh, season 2. It's only, uh, I think it's 8 episodes for season 1 and it's 9 episodes for season 2. So assuming you haven't seen a single episode just yet, it isn't that many episodes to watch, but uh, if you've already seen uh, Season 1, then go and watch Season 2. If you like the Season 1, Season 2 is, is more of the stuff that you like. And again, it's a, it's a great representation of the 80s. Uh, if, you, if you ever wondered what the 80s may have been like, this is a great example of that. Uh, for those who may not know, uh, basically this, this series is playing on uh, Netflix. I have no idea it's playing on any other networks. So if you don't have Netflix, I'm not sure where you can see that show. But again, if you can, if you know someone who has Netflix, go to their house for a couple of days, watch the whole series. It is, it is really worth it. The kids do a great job. All the actors do a great job. Uh, the characters are three-dimensional characters, three-dimensional human beings that can actually be a bit complex. Sometimes they, make, they can be likable, eh, sometimes not so likable. Again, they're regular people, and that that and the, the the story is really well written, and so the characters are really well written, and the music also is really good. Uh, not only the the pop music that they actually choose to insert into the film to give it the the feel of the '80s, but even the musical soundtrack is really really strong. 
And again, as I mentioned earlier, we see a lot of people complain about uh, modern films uh, from either Michael Bay or Zack Snyder with uh, the shaky camera where you don't barely see anything of what's going on. Again, this is pretty much the opposite of it. It is really well filmed. Uh, you Visually, you see really well what's going on. The, the, the way they tell the story visually, it is really clear, really, really well done. They do a great job at avoiding a lot of mistakes that modern filmmakers make. So it is, it is a really well done TV show that that's, doesn't even look like a TV show. It, it's actually, a, a, as I mentioned before, it's actually a nine hour movie. And it, it, deserves, uh, it deserves your support. So I would strongly suggest, guys, support this TV show. It is all kinds of awesome. We need to have more TV shows like that. And in order to be able to get more, we have to support those we get. And this is a really, again, it, this is a re really well-written TV show. It is well-filmed. It has great music. It has great characters. So support that TV show so that we can get more like it in the future. Will they make a Stranger Things 3? I have no doubt that they will. Uh, the, this, this season was too well-made. The show is too well-made for them not to make more. I don't have any inside source or anything like that, but from what I understand, season one was a, was a hit. It, it had a lot of success. Uh, season two is as well made as season one, so I suspect it will have at least as uh, the, the very same success that season one had. Maybe even more now that maybe more people will talk about it. Maybe it will build on the hype of the first season and gather more, uh, more a, a bigger audience. I guess we're going to have to wait and see, but I, I strongly doubt that day they won't make a season three the only question often is uh when will they make it i guess they they had they cannot wait too long because they have a bunch of kids in the show and uh, sadly those kids will get older so they have to make season three be before those kids get uh, quote unquote too old if it makes any sense so again guys if it's not done already go watch that show if you have watched it uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Let me know what you think about season one. If uh, if if you only saw season one, if you saw season two, what do you think of season two? Again, uh, feel free to leave your comment in the comment section down below, and let's start uh, talking about that awesome TV series. And hopefully, uh, we'll get more like it in the future. So that's uh, pretty much it for now, guys. So as always, thanks for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.